it. Are yeah. folks actually taking advantage of these remote work visas or is it still sort of just an idea? Yeah, no, that's a that's a great question, Finn. And it's actually one that um, persists. Um, I can't think of a hotter topic that's been coming up over the course of the last, especially 18, 24 months. Um, pandemic, nobody has to come to the office. Uh, I'm kind of tired of being at home. Um, always wanted to go to this place. This might be my only shot. Uh, you know, how, how do we, uh, how do we make this happen? How do we as a business retain our talent, um, and make sure that we're affording people opportunities during this very strange, uh, during this very strange time. And then, you know, the culture having the understanding that remote work is here to stay, right? It's not, you know, they might become hybrid. Some folks do have to go back in depending on the organization's uh, requirements, but as an overall concept, um, it's not, it's not going away. And so countries, and we talked a little bit about the first to market aspect of things earlier. Um, countries in the Caribbean, Finn, every every place that you listed off, uh, you know, in your description, wanted to get there first because maybe it wasn't a popular place for immigration in the past or to get talent in, right? Maybe we need the tourism dollars. Maybe we need the industry dollars that could come from just establishing something here. And so um, a lot of those countries went through that uh, went through that process, and um, the visas are real. Finn, <laughs> to your earlier question, they they exist. People do take advantage of them, um, but I think what you saw over the course of the last uh, couple of years as well is some countries were first to market and some bigger ones were too. I mean, Dubai had a, you know, a remote work visa early um, or UAE, I should say, but the, uh, a lot of countries we saw these bigger ones that are now rolling out remote work visa options were sort of, I think, lying in wait and seeing how it worked out for some other countries. Where do we need to proactively fill in gaps and make sure we can facilitate this and, and make it all work? Um, but the fact that they are rolling them out now shows that, um, you know, just how real of a thing this is because what they don't want to miss out on is um, companies that are afraid of losing talent because they don't have an option to work in some of these uh, in some of these other places. And then if you think of it from the country's perspective as well, um, you know, okay, this uh, big company X was never going to open an office in Madrid. Um, they were never going to come to Spain, but they have a bunch of workers that want to work from Spain. How do we create an opportunity to do that? And maybe we, you know, backdoor an actual business presence here and get that industry going and become an, uh, become a big destination for things like the tech workers who um, oftentimes are the main beneficiaries of uh, these kinds of programs, right? So it's a, it's a really interesting time. You're seeing sort of the push and pull between companies and governments and making sure that we're not foreclosing any opportunities on the industry and business side or on the talent side amongst all of those stakeholders. And um, I would expect to continue to see rollouts of new nomad visa options, remote work visa options um, amongst those countries that uh, have them or have recently rolled them out and want to be more expansive about it. Hey everyone, thank you for tuning in to Immigration and Mobility Decoded. Uh, if you watch this video on YouTube and you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the Envoy Global YouTube channel for more content like this. Uh, otherwise, please follow us on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks, everyone.